Jack, what is your vision for the future of humankind? It's very different than anything you've ever seen in Hollywood. My vision is that we have the possibility of building a world without poverty, hunger, war, and all the other problems that confront society today. We can solve all of those problems. It's just a matter of time, and it wouldn't take that long. It would take just a few years from the time the people say go, if they agree with the direction. The direction differs from the way you were brought up. I'm not appealing to you. I don't speak to you to win approval. I speak to you to tell you what the problems are that we face. And in a nutshell, it's paradise or oblivion. We're either going to destroy one another, the earth, in nuclear war or economic deprivation. So what I offer is a possibility for all the world's people and protection of the environment. And that essentially calls for differences in the way we conduct human affairs. I would say that in order for us to survive, we have to bring all the nations together. And we don't do it with the American way or democracy. We have to do it in ways that they understand it. I believe I understand the necessity of adjusting to many different values in order to attain a world of peace and harmony with nature. In other words, we are not separate from nature. We're part of it. What happens in nature affects us. If we destroy the oceans and the atmosphere, we destroy ourselves. So the answer to the future problems are very simple, actually. They're not complicated. We must declare all the Earth's resources as a common heritage of all the world's people. And we must remove all the artificial boundaries that separate people. Now, if you don't like what I'm saying, that's your problem. I do not control the future. I'm just telling you where the problems are. So I'd say that all aberrant behavior, behavior that we don't like, is produced by our society, by scarcity and deprivation. All wars are based upon retaining the values of your culture, that is, the successful people of your culture. They put out there what kept them in power. And when people run for political office, they say things people like to hear. But the basic ideas is don't change anything. We like things the way they are. You cannot achieve social nucleation, that is the bringing together of all nations, and yet retain all your private values, which you've gotten over the years. I want to say this precisely, that all our language is very old. We learned this language hundreds of years ago. So it's almost impossible for people to talk to one another. We have to develop a language that has uniform interpretation, such as mathematics, chemistry, structural engineering. When engineers talk to each other, they talk about the characteristics of metal, what metal can stand in compression, torsion, tension, compression. So when engineers talk to each other, they understand each other. If bridge building and designing was subject to interpretation, you couldn't build a bridge that would stand up. So what I'm suggesting is that we use engineering scales of performance. First, we have to do a survey of what the Earth's resources are, how many factories, arable land, and maintain a population in relation to the carrying char characteristics of the Earth's resources, not some opinion of a group of senators or politicians. I'm making this statement to help clarify things. All politicians are cerebral insufficients. They don't have the information necessary to stop wars. They don't know how to increase the agricultural yield. In fact, they don't know how to design buildings, bridges, or anything related to the physical needs of people. Their system was great a hundred years ago, but today it's obsolete. 
And if we wish to build a new world, we have to base it upon a survey of existing resources and maintain a population in accordance with the carrying capacity of the earth. We also have to have the intelligent management of the earth's resources, and that can only be done through the scientific method. No matter how sincere politicians are, if their decisions are not based upon verifiable, testable evidence, it is worthless. So again, I repeat, we have to develop a language that has that is not subject to interpretation. Now, let me give you an example of that. When you read the Bible, some people say, well, this is what Jesus meant. Another person says, no, he meant that. And a third person has another interpretation. So you have the Seventh-day Adventists, the Jumpers for Jesus, the Catholics. You have all these different denominations because the Bible is subject to interpretation. Whenever senators get up and speak, they usually say nothing. They have nothing to say. This is the greatest country on earth. God bless America. We hope for total employment. No process level. No description of methods for solving problems. So what I hear on the part of most people is their innermost urge for peace and goodwill to all people, but no way of attaining that. How do you increase the agricultural yield? How do you prevent the Samis? These are commons, common problems to all people. The Samis, earthquakes, hurricanes, and earthquakes kill millions of people. So what we would work on in the Venus Project is problems common to all people and bridge the difference between nations so that survivability, or such notions as survivable, not for General Motors or Bank of America or America or any other country, our concepts are for all the world's people to bring them up in the best, the cleanest environment that technology can provide. It is not a technology to control people. All that technology would control is the production and distribution of goods and services. It will not control people. Now, what I have to say about the future is that we fail to accept responsibility for our own future. Others will do our thinking for us sometimes referred to as fascism. That is the message.